Hello, uh, today let's take a look at the difference between display flex and display inline flex. First we'll take a look at the HTML. We have our body element with h1 and two container divs with a class wrap. Each container has three items in it and then there's a paragraph with some text and this is sits within a body element. Okay, right now uh, we don't have any display flex or any display inline flex on our containers. And uh, let's take a look how it looks in the browser. Okay, so this is H1, container 1, and then second container, and then our P element. Okay, I'm just going to for now remove these extra items from the second container just to make it equal number of items within each container. So it looks like this. So the key to understanding what happens is that each display property actually consists of two components, outer display model and inner display model. And uh, let's take a look at three scenarios to help us understand what happens when we add display flex and display inline flex to our divs. Okay, the first scenario is this one. This is when there's no display flex or display inline flex, and they behave like block level elements in the normal flow, just stack on top of each other, and then we can see the default of our containers display block. This is the first scenario. The second scenario is when we add display flex. We're going to go back to my CSS and then activate display flex. Okay. So this is our display flex, and then here two things happen. The first thing is that our, what it's called, the outer display model of our flex container becomes block. So on the outer, it behaves like a block level element in the normal flow. In other words, the container becomes display block flex. And the second thing what happens is the inner display type or the inner display model of these two containers it becomes flex container meaning the children inside the containers they become flex items and they, they participate in the flex layout so on the outside it's like a block level on the inside it's a flex layout so and because we didn't declare any flex direction properties, they default to flex direction row. And they are placed along the main axis horizontally from left to right. So from left to right. Okay, the second scenario. And then the third scenario, uh, what happens when we add display inline flex? So I activated display inline flex on both containers. And this is what happens. Again, two things happen in this case. The outer display model of these two containers becomes inline. So they on the outside, they act as an inline level element. However, on inside, they become and behave again as a flex containers because these items, they become flex children. And again, they are placed uh, on the, by default to flex direction row from left to right. To see this, we can just add more items to the second container just to demonstrate this further. I'm going to copy and paste. Okay, see, they're still in line 
and but with but inside inside the container they are placed according to the main axis horizontally here left to right okay so the difference between the the bottom line is that the difference between the two is how flex containers behave within the layout so in one case with the display in display flex they act as a block with the display inline flex they act as inline elements so this is the main difference okay guys and uh, there's a good article by Rachel Andrew on smashingmagazine.com it's called what happens when you create a flex box flex container I'm gonna post the link below this video and that's all I wanted to share with you guys today and as always thank you for watching